Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today for our third webinar for this year's Giving Day for Apes, um, all about price structure and strategy. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so just as a quick note, this webinar is being recorded and it'll be posted um, to the Giving Day for Apes asset library after um, we've completed it and the slides will also be available for viewing. Um, so welcome, my name is Sarah. I am a project manager that helps out with Giving Day for Apes um, with the platform provider Mighty Cause. Um, we're very excited to be partnering with Giving Day for Apes again this year in their 10th uh, anniversary year. So I'll pass it over to Jackie to say hello. Thank you, Sarah, and thanks everyone. Um, well, this is our third webinar and um, if we just go to the next slide. Um, this is going to be about prizes, or a lot of it's going to be about prizes, so it's always a, a fun webinar to talk about uh, the support we have and the kinds of prizes that our participants can win during early giving and leading up to Giving Day for Apes. So let's go on and talk about prizes. Um, this year we have a total of $64,500 in prizes. Um, we have uh, some great event sponsors this year. Of course, Arcus Foundation um, that created this event 10 years ago. And we have some new sponsors this year. So we just want to thank them all for uh, giving us the opportunity to offer these prizes and also just for their support of our mission and the goal of Giving Day for Apes. So we'll start with our first prize. Now, we kind of broken these down into prizes that you can win based on activity and early giving and prizes that are going to be awarded on the day itself. And you see we have a little light bulb up in the corner there. So some of these are prizes where you might want to think about strategy and that's where we put the light bulb. Some of them are very random prizes where there's not much you can do to prepare. Uh, you just might win or not. And so we just want to point that out. The first prize I want to talk about is our storytelling prize. And we talked about this prize in a lot of detail in our last webinar, so I won't go into detail again. This is a prize that organizations have to ask to be considered for. You won't automatically be entered. Um, there is a submission link on the prizes page of the Giving Day website. And this year, it's a little different from previous years because we're not just looking at uh, your Mighty Cause page, but we are asking you to submit some piece of campaign material as well, whether it be a link to a video on YouTube that you've created for the event or some graphics that you're posting on social media um, or some text of storytelling that you're using in an email or, or in a social media message. So it's something that you have to submit by September 19th. So obviously it's gonna be some activity and early giving that you'll have to do if you wanna be ready to submit this prize, um, this prize uh, for consideration. Um, we have the guidelines for this prize on the prize page of the Giving Day website. We have it in both English and Indonesian. There are links to download that. And again, there is now a link there so you can submit to your organization for consideration. So let's move on because we have a couple of other prizes that are based on early giving activity. Now, early giving begins on September 11, and um, we've done golden ticket prizes every year, but this is the first year that we are going to be awarding some golden tickets based on early giving activity. There'll be four of those prizes. $250 each, and again, you see the little light bulb. So there's a strategy here. You basically have to start your fundraising in early giving. Um, the period for, for consideration is the whole early giving period. So starting September 11th and going up to midnight October 3rd, all of those online donations are chances to win. And we always describe golden tickets as being something like every time someone makes an online donation to your organization, it's like your name is being thrown in a hat. The more donations you get, the more times your name is thrown in and more chances that your name will be pulled to win those golden tickets. And those tickets will be awarded right before we go live where those names will be drawn. The amount of the donation doesn't matter it can be as little as $5, that's the minimum online donation. And there's gonna be a limit uh, of how many early giving golden tickets one organization can win. You know, uh, below we wrote a maximum of two. 
So think about some activity in early giving, even if you're not going to really be engaging in your campaign until you get to giving day or closer to giving day. If you just get a few donations in during that period, starting September 11th, you'll have chances to win these tickets. And let's um, go on to the next one. Okay, the kickoff prizes. Uh, this is not a new prize, but it is one that requires some strategy also. This is also based on early giving activity and two prizes will be given, one to the smaller budget organization, one to the larger budget organization. And it's based on how much activity you've gotten during the early giving period. Um, the most unique donors who have donated online you don't have to have raised the most money in early giving. You don't have to be big donations. They can be as little as $5. It's just how many different people you have engaged. Um, you're not gonna be able to see where you are on that, uh, on that kind of leaderboard um, during early giving. But these might be opportunities for you to do uh, campaigns we often see like, you know, give $5 today. Can you just give up the price of a cup of coffee today? Just can generate those small donations leading up to giving day. Uh, those prizes are $300 each. And I just wanted to ask you, Sarah, if you have any other ideas on strategy for early giving, since these are the early giving prizes. Um, yeah, I would say start planning your messaging for early giving. So Early giving obviously hasn't started yet, so you have plenty of time to start um, kind of creating emails, um, social media posts and everything so that you don't feel like you have as much of a lift during early giving. Um, we always talk about doing as much as you can prior to your asks to try to set it up. So um, what are your social media posts planned for early giving? What are your, you know, what images do you need to collect to have a compelling story for um, like emails that are going out and stuff like that? So if you are going to try to work on securing an early giving prize, um, start planning now because planning ahead is definitely going to be easier than just deciding, you know, when early giving starts to try to, you know, secure prizes. Great. So let's go on to the prizes that are going to be given away on giving day itself. And the first of these are milestone prizes. Uh, there's no little light bulb here because there's no real strategy. This is just uh, a matter of chance and luck. Every donation that comes in online, it comes in order. When we open early giving, the first donation that comes in is donation one. Uh, when we get to donation 2000, uh, there will be a prize to whoever receives that of $200 and then donation 2,500 and donation 3,000. Again, it doesn't matter what size the donation is. It doesn't matter if this is a unique donor. It's just the number of the donation. Um, the only strategy here is really to just get some online donations. We don't know where in the event these are going to happen. So it may be your organization. It may not, but we will announce those whenever they happen. So next we go on to another one where there's no strategy. This is our 10th giving day and we are celebrating by giving away some prizes. So we've created this 10 at 10 prize category where $1,000 prizes are going to be given out at 10 a.m. Eastern, $1,000 prizes given at 10 p.m. Eastern. They're not even based on donations received. These are not golden tickets. These are just random polls of names of participants that my DFS will handle. And so if you are a registered participant, you're going to have a chance to win these prizes. We're going to limit them to two per organization so that we can spread the luck around and everyone can participate in celebrating our Thanksgiving Day. Okay, now golden tickets. These are a matter of strategy and we're really excited that we have 18 golden tickets to give away in this giving day. They are all worth $500. And these are the tickets that uh, during designated hours, you have to receive at least one online donation for a chance to win. There is now a 24 hour prize schedule posted on the prizes page of giving day. You can download that and that lists every prize happening in a certain hour. 
The tickets are separated into categories, so make sure you know which ones you qualify for. We have three general golden tickets that every participant has a chance to win. There are three that are restricted to the smaller budget organizations, that is the budgets of $500,000 and under, as indicated on your registration forms. And then we have region restricted golden tickets, four for those on the Africa leaderboard, four for those on the Asia leaderboard, four for those on the North America leaderboard. So there are lots of chances to win. And just make sure to look at the schedule and look at the times for the tickets that your organization is eligible to win depending where you're located and depending on your budget. Um, again, the rules on this, if there is a ticket time, here's the example I gave, 7 to 8 a.m. That means your organization has to receive at least one online donation during that hour, and then the winner will be announced right after the end of the hour. It doesn't matter how much the donation is, it can be a $5 donation. Um, we have some limits, uh, one general golden ticket per organization, three total go uh, golden tickets. So as a matter of strategy here, these might be hours where if you have a matching grant, a matching fund, that you might want to use those to kind of generate more interest and activity during that hour. These are hours that you might want to make sure that you publicize on your social media, put up a schedule, or tell your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers to just generate activity during that hour. And Sarah, did you want to add anything on golden ticket strategy? Um, yeah, golden ticket strategy, um, while it is random, the more donations obviously that you get, um, the better chances you have to be pulled. Um, I would say just making clear calls to your uh, supporters that you have a chance to win the golden ticket and this is the hour. Um, donors can give multiple times in the hour like jackie was saying so they don't have to give just five dollars they can give you know five dollars ten times if they wanted to do that um because those uh are going to all be chances to enter so you can kind of come up with a strategy as far as breaking if you have a donor who wants to give in a larger amount um you could even send out emails letting them know like if you want to give fifty dollars consider giving you know Five dollars ten times so there are a couple different kind of ways that you can get creative to try to get more tickets in the hat so to speak yeah and another thing you might consider with social media for the golden tickets we all know how difficult it is to get our facebook and instagram posts distributed to audiences but use uh, stories using facebook and instagram stories can you get a more immediate response they can reach more people immediately with more of a sense of urgency to just kind of let them know right now, right now is the time that you can help us to maybe win $500. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going on to the, our leaderboards. Um, and these are the same leaderboards that we've had just about every year. We have most dollars raised leaderboards for each region with four winners for each. So a lot of opportunities to win here. And for all of the leaderboards, um, of course, this only is going to be in, uh, counting online donations on the Mighty Cause platform, and it will include all donations received from the time early giving opens on September 11th. Um, for the most dollar raise leaderboard, it's not going to be just donations to your organization page, but also to peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers that are supporting your organization. So all of those go into the most dollars raised totals for your organization. So as a matter of strategy on this, um, obviously if you start in early giving, you have more time to kind of build that leaderboard total. So you may not want to rely on just giving day for apes itself. Um, if you want to try to win a leaderboard prize, you might want to start early um, or at least start getting the message out that you are participating in giving day for apes this year. Um, because leaderboard totals are based on the performance throughout the event and early giving, it doesn't really matter what times that you might use uh, matching grants, but obviously a matching grant uh, will help build your totals. And um, anything else you want to add on this, Sarah? 
Yeah, I was thinking about matching grants as well. So matching grants, um, we have some slides on that towards the end of the presentation, um, but they can really fuel uh, the excitement during uh, the giving period. So obviously it doesn't matter what time because it's encompassing the whole of early giving um, through the event, uh, but matching grants definitely make people excited to give um, and they create um, just momentum. So if you want to consider as part of strategy this year, maybe you haven't done a matching grant, try to get maybe one or two. Um, and then hopefully all of, you know, potentially also your, the grantor, once the match is met, um, if they submit their grant, their match as an online gift, that would also be counted towards your leaderboard. Mm -hmm. And an exciting thing about the leaderboards are they are visible. Uh, once Giving Day starts, uh, the Giving Day website changes and all the leaderboards are live and they change in real time. So you can watch how close you are to that next place. So if you're in second and just you know, need a little help to get to first or you're in fifth and you just want to reach up so you can get the fourth place prize, which, whichever, these are messages that you can send to your supporters and send those in your you know instagram stories or or emails say we're so close you know, just help us get to the next level and your supporters can kind of see in real time where you are and how how much more you need to get to that next step mm -hmm. so just completing our leaderboards we have the most unique donors leaderboard again and there are three places on this one um, the same rules, they are only online donations. This will include the count from September 11th. Um, this isn't necessarily the organizations that have raised the most money. Again, it's engaging the most different people. So um, let's move on to the next one. Um, can I also mention something on this one, Jackie? Of course. Um, so one thing for strategy for unique donors, um, it's listed here, third bullet down, but this includes donors who make donations to peer to peer fundraisers. So peer to peer fundraising is a really, really wonderful way to try to get um, more unique donors. So obviously unique donors are in one person. So if one person makes, you know, three gifts during the day, they're still only going to count as one person. But to reach more people, peer to peer fundraising is going to open up a whole new network to you that you might not otherwise have access to. So that's a really good plan is to try to get um, whoever you can think of, you know, staff, volunteers, sponsors to try to create peer to peer pages to try to reach people who you might not necessarily be able to connect with during the event. Great point. So just finishing the leaderboards, we are again going to have a leaderboard for peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers with four prizes on it. And the same rules will apply. It's only online donations. This will include cumulative totals from the time that early giving opens on September 11th. And I just put a note here that we do have rules and information about peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers in the participant toolkit, and I think in our general rules as well. And specifically that Organizations um, are not to be using their own resources to promote or encourage donations to peer-to-peer -peer pages. Peer-to-peer -peer is really separate of individuals or groups of individuals reaching their contacts. And so that means that your organization during the um, early giving and giving day period should not be putting up links to your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers or calling them out by name on social media. Of course, you can contact them privately and thank them for their support. And of course, once the event is over, you can uh, recognize them by name, but just please do not promote them, keep them separate from your organization's fundraising. Okay. So next we move on to the power hours. We have had these uh, for many years and so there's really not much different these are twenty five hundred dollars each there are assigned start and end times for each power hour each region has two power hour competitions for most dollars raised in that hour and most unique donors in that hour and for you know obviously it is just based on activity that is happening in that hour it's not necessarily who has raised the most funds overall it's just who has had the best performance in that hour and so just to point out on the most unique donors power hour, if you've had a donor already make a donation, 
they can come back in that hour just to give another $5 and be counted as a unique donor in that hour. They're not recounted as a unique donor overall, but for this hour they are. And we do have the light bulb here because you know, this is a big strategy prize. This is one where you really wanna focus activity and you're giving during this hour. So if you know donors, for example, you know larger, larger dollar donors who say, oh, I'm gonna come in during giving day and give you thousand dollars or five thousand or whatever you're lucky to have you might want to let them know that this would be a great hour to do it during the most dollars raised hour during the most unique donors power hour that might be where you have a strategy where you want to send messages to your supporters please come back and just give us five dollars during this hour just at least five dollars these are great opportunities to use matching grants as well and sarah anything else you want to Add to that? Yeah, I was gonna highlight matching grants as well. Um, really good idea to try to schedule a match during um, one of these hours because it's going to also fuel momentum as far as encouraging donors to give at a specific time. Um, especially if you know you have a match and it's it didn't just you know pop up during the day. Matches are something that you can bring awareness to throughout like emails, communication, social media hey, during this day, this hour, we have a match, we're matching one-to-one -one maybe, um, or whatever your match looks like. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then there was one other thought that I had. Oh yes, um, so most unique donors, again, that's going to also reflect peer-to-peer um, -peer pages. So if you do have peer-to-peer -peer supporters, you should think about having a communication plan in place with them as far as when it would be a great time for them to really rally their own supporters on their own fundraising pages. So you could say, you know, during this hour, we have a most unique donors prize. Um, we're trying to rally. So reach out to your networks um, and do your thing, you know, reach out to family, share your links. Because um, sometimes, you know, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, uh, it can be overwhelming for some people. So just having, you know, an email plan or a schedule in place that people can look to, to really know how to support your organization is going to be really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And um, just going back to power hours, last year for the first time, we had these mini leaderboards to follow power hour activity to see who were the top, who were the leaders in it. And I think we're going to be doing that again. So you're going to be able to see in real time where you are on that power hour. And again, if you see you're real close to getting that first place, but you're not quite there, that can be a message to send out with some urgency um, through text messages or Facebook or Instagram stories or however you can reach your supporters with, you know, some urgency. All right. So we're bringing back an old favorite we haven't done in a couple of years. This is the end of the night prize. And I realize that depending where you are, it's not necessarily the end of the night, but it is the end of the event. So the very last online donation of the event that comes in and is received before the clock strikes midnight that organization is going to win a $400 prize. Um, the amount of the donation doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's from a, someone who's already donated or a unique donor. It's just the last donation that is registered for this event before it shuts down. And there's no real strategy here. We have a little light bulb, but really it's just encouraging your donors to come back uh, before the end and say, help us win this one last prize. Um, close to midnight. Uh, it was exciting when we did this. We haven't done it, I think, in the past two years, but it is exciting to see all this last minute activity uh, because it usually results also in some last minute shifting on the leaderboards too when this activity comes in. So just encourage people to come back right before midnight and five more dollars might help you win $400 prize. Okay, we need to talk about this one. This is a new prize that we have created. This is the most improved prize. There will be a $300 prize for each region. Um, to be eligible, organizations must have participated in last year's Giving Day for Apes. And the prize is going to be look, uh, looking at how many more unique donors your organization has received this year versus last year. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean you've raised the most money. It may not be a lot 
uh, of new donors, uh, you know, a lot more donors this year than last year. It's just who has gotten, had shown the most improvement. Um, we're excited to, to, to see how this prize does. This is our first time doing it. We have created an information sheet, um, a listing of the number of online unique donors all of the organizations had in 2022. Um, it is at the link on this slide and we'll, we'll publicize this as well. So you'll be able to see what your number was last year. And then you can look at the most unique donors leaderboard as it is live for this year's event and see where you are and how many more unique donors that you've had. Um, you know, again, the strategy is just engaging as many people as possible. These are numbers of donors, so it doesn't mean they have to make large donations. They can just be $5 donations, but it's engaging more people this year. Um, we noted that we'll announce this October 4, just to give us a little time to confirm everything. Um, but we hope that we, uh, that this gives some incentive to just really go out there and, and, and get more more people engaged to win that $300 prize. Anything else on this one? Because it is new. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited about this one um, because essentially organizations, you are competing against yourself from last year. Um, so it's not so much looking at, you know, what other organizations raised last year. You're really just trying to outdo yourself. Um, and so that's kind of what we're looking at is far as you know comparing performance um so yeah i'm very excited to see how it does all right so just in summary on this so where do prizes fit into your campaign there's a lot of prizes and this may seem overwhelming um go to the prize page on the giving day site it breaks it all down and again there's a 24-hour schedule that you can download so you can really just focus on okay where are my power hours where are the golden tickets i'm eligible to win so get comfortable with that let us know if you have any questions about it but not everyone is going to be able to win every prize and you can really decide your strategy of what you want to reach for if you really don't think your organization is going to win a leaderboard prize, focus on golden tickets, focus on getting some matching grants, focus on building your unique donors. There's lots of random prizes this year. We've tried to build more opportunities for organizations of every size to win something. Um, so Sarah, do you wanna kind of go through the rest of the slide? Yeah, uh, so you said the rest of the slide? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so like Jackie was saying, considering which prizes from the list are prizes that you are going to try to rally your supporters to help you win, um, it's going to be really helpful. Uh, don't get overwhelmed, you know, consider your goals. Um, what kind of goals do you have for your campaign? Are you trying to raise, obviously, a certain dollar amount or a certain unique donor count or even just new donors? Um, so use the prizes as talking points for your campaign and make sure they align with the goals and the milestones that you're trying to reach because those coinciding together just makes really powerful call to actions within emails, social media posts, um, or even a newsletter that you send out within, you know, August or September, just letting people know uh, in general, here's the prizes we're trying to win, here's how they fit into our campaign, and here's the goals we have for the event. Um, within that, you can then also create a timeline as far as best times for your supporters to donate or share links to your pages or rally their own peer to peer supporters. Um, having a clear plan in place will make everybody feel much more in line and understanding of like when they can best support you So come up with that timeline um, look at the timeline on uh, obviously the website with all the prizes, highlight, you know, the ones that you are going to focus on. Um, and then just reminders to supporters when the time to give is actually happening. So let them know in a social media post, let them know on Facebook, add the direct link to your organization page or to your donation button to make it super easy for somebody to give right away, right when you need them to. Um, and just giving everyone, you know, the links that they need to be able to support or share your campaign to support um, when you need them to. 
Um, and overall, giving days um, are really just and the prizes themselves, uh, and the wonderful sponsors who donate these prizes. Um, it's really a chance for you to just generate interest and build momentum for your campaign and give you talking points. Um, so having your community come together all at the same time, supporting, you know, the cause, uh, your mission. So all of these, even if you don't win anything, you've at the end of the day, you've won, you know, supporters, you've won new donors, you've, won, you've, you know, generated more interest. And hopefully, you know, you continue those relationships with the donors outside of the giving day um, so that you can continue, you know, bringing in donors and supporting uh, dollars for the work that you do throughout the year. So I just wanted to add, we just this morning added a new document to the participant toolkit on the Giving Day website. It's a little planning guide, a worksheet that if you're not sure what where to start this year, um, or you do, but you just want to put it all down in one place, it's a worksheet to kind of take you through your goals. As Sarah said, you might not win a prize. Um, but there are other ways to be successful depending on what goals are realistic and what's gonna be helpful for you. And that could be increasing your donors, getting your first matching grant, um, retaining donors from last year. So this worksheet takes you through that, kind of thinking through who you can ask to help your campaign in different ways and how you're gonna put your story together and the kinds of images and uh, text that you wanna use. So it's uh, available to download take a look at it and hopefully it will be something that's helpful. So now I'm going to turn it over to Sarah to talk about matching grants. Thank you. Um, so two uh, fundraising tools that we're really going to highlight in this webinar are matching grants in detail and peer to peer fundraising um, and how really to engage and activate your ambassadors. So those are your supporters. So we'll start with matching grants. Um, so securing a matching grant, it's a really great tool, like we were saying throughout the prize conversation, it's a way to boost excitement and encourage donations, especially at a specific time or hour. So this is going to be ideal, um, you know, obviously to have at any point during the event, uh, but a really great idea is to have it during, say, a power hour when you need to try to rack up all those dollars or more donors. Um, so to get started with a match, this is something that you are going to secure for your own organization. So you're going to want to talk to anybody who have, you know, members of your organization or big donors, uh, say a donor who gives, you know, in a large amount, like 500 or a thousand or whatever, uh, they give, you can talk to them about, you know, changing that mindset of just doing a donation to becoming a match, uh, grantor to encourage more gifts from other donors and a lot of donors are very excited to take part in that because it just adds another level um, of impact for them uh, and it's very exciting so think about who you could ask corporate sponsors um, you know community partners stuff like that uh, communicate and learn so you're going to want to talk to them figure out if that's something they're interested in talk to your major donors see if that's something they're interested in let them know how it, the process would work and what you would need for them um, and let them know that you know at the end of the match you will follow up with them regarding the statistics you know everyone wants to know like well how many donors did I encourage to donate during that hour with my match so coming up communicating learning having a follow-up plan with your matcher is something you'll want to do um, and then making the actual ask so once you've felt it out you know someone uh, who is interested actually make the ask um, and of course start the process now you have plenty of time to try to secure a couple matches uh, or even just one match um, uh, we also have very flexible matching options so you can work with your donor make it engaging and fun for them you can pull up uh, what the donation um, sorry what the match Kind of form looks like which i believe is on my next slide um and work with them and just create like a deeper relationship with that uh with that grantor um and just remember matching grants don't need to be enormous they don't need to be 500 dollars. they can even just be 200 dollars um, because basically what you're doing is just offering up some funds for those who give during that special matching time um so also, another thing to consider is that multiple people can go in on a match, so you can pool like funds to create a larger matching gift and gift and you can say. 
um, you can recognize the group. So maybe the group um, has a fun name that they want to go by, and you can put that in the match information. Um, so this is what a live match actually looks like. You're going to have a little sticker on your donate button. So donors coming to your page can see that you have a live match. Uh, Mighty Cause is auto going to calculate how much of the match has been fulfilled. So once the match is closed, um, it'll let you or the donor email that you add, it'll let them get notification that the match has been closed. Um, and then there will be an, a button if you do add their email, letting them know that they can make their gift online. They don't have to make their gift online, um, but for, you know, a gift to count towards a leaderboard, all gifts need to be made online. Um, but a summary block will also appear on your page listing all of the live matching grants um, and showing you how much is left, which is very exciting. So this is what it looks like. Um, as far as adding a matching grant, it is super easy to set up. It is found under your dashboard when you log in. On the left hand side, it's under fundraising tools, matching grants. Um, you'll pull up an entire match manager. It'll have live matches, past matches. It's kind of just the history of your match managing match management. Um, and you'll click create at the top right and a pop up panel will show you all of the different settings. So you can add the name of your match sponsor. You can hide the name publicly if they want to be anonymous. Um, you can add an image. Maybe it's a logo if it's a corporate sponsorship or a community partner sponsor. Um, if it's a group of employees, maybe you just have a group picture of them. Uh, so it's fun to kind of play around with these different settings. You can set the date, uh, time that it'll be active. You can choose what percentage of each donation. Most typical matches, I would say, are one-to-one. -one. So you're matching 100% of a gift. So um, like $20 are going to get $20. If someone donates $100, they'll get $100. One thing to keep in mind, if you don't want your match to be eaten up super quickly, um, say you have, you know, a $500 match and somebody donates $500. Well, boop, there you go. Your match has now ended. They, I mean, so some organizations opt to match up to a certain amount. So you can set that here as well, match up to a maximum dollar amount per gift. So that helps to extend the time that your match is available, helping more donors get excited and more donors take advantage of the match. Um, so that means you could match up to, say, $50 of every gift. So if someone makes $50 gift, you'll match $50. Uh, if someone makes a $100 gift, they're still only going to match up to $50. So that's something to consider as well as you're setting up your match. Um, as well as a couple other settings, you can add an email for the person who's going to get notified. Uh, if you don't want your grantor notified and you want to handle the communications, you don't have to put your grantor's email there. Um, one question that sometimes comes up is whether or not to include match value and page metrics. Um, this is going to signify basically that uh, the total raised on from a match is going to be reflected in your organization page totals. So typically what we recommend um, if your grantor is going to fulfill the match online disable this option. Um, that allows your grantor when they make their online gift, then the lump sum of the match will be reflected in the organization total um, and reflected on the leaderboard. If your grantor is going to fill their match offline, um, then you can choose to either keep it enabled or disabled. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that if your page total is not reflecting accurately and there's a discrepancy between how much you've actually raised uh, it is most likely that you are accidentally double counting your match. So all you would need to do is just go to your match manager and click the little eyeball icon to hide uh, the matching funds um, because most likely they're being duplicated. So hopefully that makes sense. Sometimes there's confusion. If you are confused on the day of the event and your totals are looking funny and you had a match and you think something might be up, just let our support team know. They deal with matches probably at least once a day, if not multiple times a day. Um, and they can easily take a look and help you out. Uh, and you can email can, them. Yeah, go ahead, Jackie. No, I was just going to add there, there sometimes is a discrepancy if an organization has added an offline donation. And mm -hmm. we encourage you to do that to show your total. But offline donations are not going to be included in leaderboard totals because that's only for online donations. Yes, good thing. 
Um, a couple other settings, like I mentioned, you can add a match notification email. So if you want your grantor to get notified when the match is closed so that they can click the button to make their online gift, um, you can add their email there. If, in, if instead you want to be handling it, you've already maybe gotten a check from your grantor and you plan to add that as an offline gift during the event, you don't have to put an email here. Uh, or you can put your own organization's email here so that you get notified when the match ends. Totally up to you. Um, and if at any point you need to edit your match while it is still live, you can just go back to your matching grants uh, management area and select the pencil icon um, to make any edits. One thing to note is that once your match has closed, you are no longer able to edit it. Um, and then if at any time you need to review your matches, you can always do that and check out your past history, you can see kind of the settings that you had. Um, and you can download the full report for each match, so if you had a grantor who wants to know like okay well how many. Uh, people used my match, uh, how many people benefited from it, you can download the report and you can deliver those statistics the stats to your grantor. you can say well 20 people took advantage of your match, this is so awesome look how much we raised. Um, and that is very enticing to the grantor to want to do this again. So kind of having um, a plan in place to close out, uh, and I have a slide on that as well, to, to make sure you uh, are taking care of your grantor, giving them the information they need, all of that is accessible to you uh, in your matches reports. Um, and this is also where if you're seeing, you know, confusion or discrepancy and our support team needs to take a look, this is where you can hide um, the funds from your page so that they're not accidentally duplicated for any reason. Um, you can do that there as well. Um, another fundraising tip is to activate your ambassadors. So your ambassadors are your supporters. So this is kind of a larger picture term um, as far as people who are supporting uh, your organization. That's people who are fundraising for you, people who are sharing links for you, people who are just word of mouth talking about your campaign. Um, so why should you engage your ambassadors? Um, they help you reach and acquire new donors. They are people who want to share their own impact stories. They want to share with people that they know and care about like, hey, here's this organization. This is the work they're doing and it really means a lot to me. Um, they help you amplify your outreach. They help you raise more money by being engaged and sharing links. Um, in general, what can they do? They can do anything from just sharing a link to your page, talking about your campaign, resharing social media posts. You can ask them to click reshare to their you know, stories on Instagram. Um, they can even forward an email that you sent them to somebody else that they know. Um, so you can just make it really easy for them by talking to these different supporters and letting them know like here's different ways you can help support us and this is a really good email to come up with prior to your campaign letting people know like here's 10 ways to support us uh and maybe it's not just you know sending us you know a donation here's you know five or six non-monetary ways to support our campaign to help us win prizes and do better um, one of these ways to help you is, of course, peer to peer fundraising uh, people to ask to be a peer to peer fundraising supporter, maybe you have you know volunteers or staff or friends or family um, or community partners. Uh, you can provide them resources tips, you can create a template for them through your organization page um, that kind of pre fills the content and we talked a little bit about that in the last webinar. Uh, but you can make it super easy for them to try to help you. That's kind of the goal. Make it as easy as possible for somebody to help you during your campaign. Um, as far as how to get started with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, so all your supporter, your ambassador would need to do is to go to your page uh, and click the fundraise button next to donate. So when they click that fundraise button, they will be prompted to create their own individual fundraising page. Um, if you have a template set up, which we always recommend, they can enable that template uh, and that gives them kind of a jumping off point. So they'll be able to, of course, make any edits. They can adjust the goal that you've set for them. They can add their own pictures. They can add their own testimonials. Um, but uh, just a really easy way to try to get them off the ground is to just set up that template for them. Um, and then your ambassador, your fundraiser can then share that URL of their fundraising page. They'll share the link directly with their own friends and family, directly on their own social media. They can switch out their link and bio to their peer to peer fundraising page. 
Um, and these are all kind of tips that you can come up with an email and send to them to try to explain to them how to actually use their peer to peer fundraising page. Um, but like I said, very easy to manage, very easy to set up. Um, you can find your peer to peer campaigns for your own organization under your fundraising tools on your dashboard. Campaigns is going to show you pretty much a whole library of peer to peer campaigns. These are, you know, campaigns that someone might have set up last year for your event. Um, if that campaign is no longer active, you are able to toggle discoverability so you can hide any out of date campaigns so that everything that's being fundraised for is active this year. Um, and pro tip, you can share your fundraise button directly as a link in any emails that you are sending asking people to be a peer to peer fundraiser for you. Um, you can create a social media post and you can say looking for a way to support us during giving day for apes consider creating a peer to peer fundraising page and you can add that direct link uh, fundraise button to your posts. Um, and then very important um, as far as strategy, you might not think this has anything to do with your campaign this year, but it definitely does and it definitely has an impact on how you're going to do with your campaign next year. So closing the loop is something that you need to work into your plan. Um, this means basically letting people know how you did during this year's event, letting them know did you hit any goals, um, and then also saying thank you. So a speedy, personal, sincere thank you is going to be so helpful in making sure you know everyone who donated and campaigned for you had a really positive experience, which will make them want to do it again, and that's the goal. It is hard to get people to, you know, peer to peer fundraise. It's something new. They haven't done it before. But once you get somebody who says, okay, I'm going to do this and they do it, you want to definitely pay special attention to them, thank them, publicly thank them if they are into that, um, personally thank them. Uh, just let them know how important and helpful that was to your campaign. Uh, and they will most likely do it again for you. Um, if they're an anonymous grantor, uh, if they don't want to be publicly thanked, you can always just make a very general thank you so much um, to our grantor for our 2 p.m. power hour uh, matching power hour type of thing. Um, and then make sure all your supporters know the data. Let them know how you did after the event. Um, their donations contributed to that data. So they're going to want to know, did you reach any goals? Did you get any prizes? um let them know the impact that their gifts had on your event um and then same thing like i was saying for your match matching grantors um let them know the data it goes so far and just letting them know like here's the actual number impact that you had on our event and it's going to encourage that donor or that community partner to want to make a match again um, and of course work into your strategy giving special attention to first time donors. So if you had a lot of peer to peer supporters working on fundraising for you and you got, you know, 10 new donors uh, have a plan in place to welcome them and onboard them and let them know. Thank you so much. We're so happy for your gift and for taking the time to check out our uh, organization. Um, send them, you know, a newsletter, uh, send them a welcome packet if you're able to or a sticker or something like that that just lets them know that they've been seen and they're appreciated um, and hopefully you can continue to retain them as donors year over year um, and thinking more about that year round stewardship and communication with donors uh, giving doesn't stop after giving day for apes you are going to want to use these tools and these um, you know different things that you're learning throughout the year to try to elevate and lift up your organization. Fundraising happens year round. So think about how you're going to take these tools um, and these donors with you throughout the year. Anything you wanted to add to this, Jackie? That's just such an important message because, you know, again, this is not giving day for apes is not just about raising money in one day, but it is getting new supporters that will hopefully be helping you year round and you know, we talk about storytelling for Giving Day for Apes and, and what are you going to say the funds are for. It's it's great to be able to follow up with the donors for Giving Day and, and kind of tell them the next step in that story. You know, thanks. If, if you were raising money to, I don't know, buy a new piece of equipment to, you know, to send that thank you email saying, you know, thanks to you and other Giving Day supporters, we were able to do this or you know, share a picture of it or something like that. 
So just closing the loop is showing them the impact that they made on Giving Day. And hopefully that will um, encourage them to continue donating to you. Um, last few slides. So we just want to reiterate the support and resources that you have available as you prepare your campaign. Um, just as Jackie said, we have a new um, kind of um, what's the word for it, Jackie? <laughs> New document that we've added. Yeah. <laughs> yes, a, a, a worksheet, a yes. planning guide. <laughs> yes, we have a wonderful new worksheet planning guide that you can download and start to fill in different goals. So check that out. We just added it this morning to the toolkit. Um, and then there's just a bunch of timelines, tips, and then templates. So definitely take advantage of the templates. Um, these are for, you know, social media posts and emails and stuff like that to just try to make your participation as easy as possible. Um, and then I guess I forgot to remove that third webinar. This is the third webinar, but if you want to revisit any of the webinars that we've already recorded, you can do that. That's on the asset library. And this third webinar is also going to be downloaded and uploaded to the asset library. So you can review the slides. You can, you know, re-listen to all of the prizes information. Um, and just be sure to check for new announcements when you sign into your organization page um, on your overview dashboard, there will be little pop-ups. We're going to add a couple new ones. Um, so you can just check those out. And of course, our Mighty Cause support team is here to help you throughout the event. Um, send them an email for any questions that you might have, any donor questions you might have, any technical questions you might have. Uh, our support team is awesome, and they are happy to help you kind of troubleshoot anything that might come up. And also, if you have any questions about any of the prizes, you're not clear on the schedule or, or any of the rules, let us know. We're happy to explain that further. And uh, as we get, we're really close to early giving. So good luck to everybody. Yeah. We're excited to see everyone's campaigns this year. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.